Hello, in this video, we are going to solve this exponential problem. This is t to the power of t and this equals 19. We are looking for the value of t that we are going to raise to the power of itself that will give us 19. So for instance, if you consider t equals 1, that means you have 1 power 1 and this is 1. So this is not 19 if you consider 2. You have 2 power 2, this is 4, and this is not 19. If you consider t equals 3, you are going to have 3 to the power of 3, and this is 27, and this is not 19. But we can get some range of values of t, because when t is 2 here, we are having 4, and this is actually less than 19. And when t is 3, we are having 27. And this 27 here is greater than 19. So the range of values of t is between when t is 2 and t is 3. So you can see that 2 is less than t, while t is less than 3. So this actually gives us a mental picture of where the value of t lies. So what are we going to do? We need to solve this. We cannot just be testing. Maybe you can consider 2.1, but that's not the way of solving a problem. So we are going to solve this problem. Now, let's make use of natural log. I have natural log of t to the power of t, and this equals natural log of 19. Now, if you have ln of a to the power of b, this equals b times ln a. So, if you apply this property right here, what you are going to have is that the t will come behind the ln. So you are going to have t times ln t equals ln 19. So how do you solve this particular problem? t times ln t equals ln 19. Now, I'm going to introduce you to what we call the Lambert W function. That's the Lambert W function. So this function here is represented with capital letter W. That's why you have this capital letter W here. How do you use it? You use it when you have an expression such as this a times e power a. You can then apply the Lambert W function by writing this capital letter Lorieu. And when once you do that, you are going to have a solution and the solution is just a. So the condition is the expression must be in this form. What you have here must be exactly what you have at the exponent here. You can also apply the lambda derivative function to basically anything, even if you have numbers, 3 times e power 3, you are going to have 3. And when once you apply the lambda derivative function. So, this function is very important and is very necessary in this particular case. So, for us to make use of this lambda derivative function, that means we need to convert this form this t times ln t to an expression like this. So for us to do that, we can simply copy out the problem, which remains t times ln t equals ln 19. Now I'm trying to convert this to something like this, so that I can apply the lambda derivative function. Now what I'm going to do will be to make use of this. Remember, if you have e power ln x, this is just like writing x because 
E raised to the power of ln is 1. So E cancels ln, and what you are going to have is just x. So this particular identity will help us to convert this to an expression like this, because I can decide to write this t as e power ln t, knowing fully well that e raised to the power of ln will give us 1. So this whole equation becomes Instead of writing t here, I'm going to have e to the power of ln t. That represents the t. Then I have times ln t, which is what we have here. And this equals ln 19. Now, the next step will be for us to rearrange this. And let's check. You consider what we have here, the model that we have here. We have a times e power a. So here is ln t. Here is ln t at the exponent. So I can just rearrange this. I have ln t times e power ln t. And this equals ln 19. Okay, that being done, the next step will be for us to apply the laboratory function because we have this here, we have this here, and there is E. So it satisfies this condition. So I can then apply the laboratory function. I have this times E power ln T. And this equals, since I've applied the lambda wave function here, I need to have lambda wave function of ln 19 here. So right now, based on what I said, if you apply the lambda wave function here, the output will basically be this and this respectively. So using that narration, that means the output here will also be lnt. So we have here lnt as solution, and this equals the lambda drive function of ln19. So from here, what I'm going to do is to solve for t. And for me to do that, I need to invoke that Euler's identity. I can easily eliminate this e ln by making use of e. If I have e power ln t and also have this e power the lambda derivative function of ln 19. If I do this, what will happen here is that the e eliminates ln. And what I'm going to have is just t. So from here, we have t equals e power lambda derivative function ln19. This is the solution to this problem that will give us a precise answer. So what you are going to do is for you to type in this into your calculator and you are going to have some approximate answers for the value of t that will satisfy that equation. And if you don't find this lambda derivative function in your calculator, what you are going to use is you have your t equals e power. You have make use of what we call product log. Product log is just another name for the lambda derivative function. Almost all scientific calculators have this product log. You have product log of ln19, e power product log of ln19. When once you type in this into your calculator, you are going to have an approximate value of t, which is about 2.83023. This is in about five decimal places. So this becomes the value of t that satisfies that equation. So if you have t power t equals 19, it simply means 
2.83023 equals 19. It's approximately 19. So, ladies and gentlemen, that is it. And that is how you can solve it without wasting time and sharing workings. So, thank you and see you again.